Welcome back for One One Family. Today we're going to take a look at another cold case, a cold case that was solved finally after 38 years. And if it wasn't for the help of one individual taking just a simple photo and sharing it on social media, this case never would have been solved. So let's jump into it. Today, we are looking at the cold case of Sherlene Cheryl Hammock. Her case was unsolved from 1981. In 1981, a body was found in a shallow grave buried in a cornfield and immediately the police had no idea who she was. They knew she didn't match any descriptions of anyone locally. They didn't have any leads. There was no forensics or evidence for that matter uh, around the actual site, the grave. They didn't even know how long she had been there. They knew she, had, she couldn't have been there that long, but they didn't know how long. You know, and that, in 1981, forensic uh, science wasn't like it was today. And sure, the police may have uh, made some mistakes. They overlooked uh, some evidence that was found in a ditch uh, down the road from the scene. But they didn't know that it, it tied to this case at all. All they knew is they had a Jane Doe on their hands, a woman who had met an untimely death, and was buried in a cornfield and there was nothing to go on they had nothing at all until recently recently because of the act of one individual a sleuth an internet uh, um, I guess you could call her an internet uh, private de detective a true crime buff and she snapped a photo along with the sketch that was done at that time of this individual and what she may have looked like, she shared it on social media. And if it wasn't for her friend seeing it on Facebook and saying, you know what, that sketch looks a lot like my friend, Cheryl, who has been missing for well over 35 years at that point, almost 37 years, to be exact, and by putting the pieces together and her coming forward with some photos, they were able to match them with the autopsy photos of, her, of this victim, and it was a match. They confirmed the match through DNA of family, living family members, but the case is now solved. solved. Now, all this time, the individual who committed this act had already been in prison. He was already doing his time for his crime. He was caught pretty close to uh, the actual events. So it wasn't like they needed to go out and find the person who did it. They already knew he did it. They just didn't know the name of the victim. And that's one of the rare things. He didn't know the victim. He just knew that he did it. And he was convicted of the crime in serving his time. But... They didn't know who, he, who she was, and he didn't know she, who she was. It wasn't like, you know, she had a driver's license and a pocket full of credit cards in 1981. She had no identification on her at all. There was one stub for a dry cleaner, but when they went to that, all the local dry cleaning places, none of it matched. That one little piece of information didn't even match to anything in locally, and nobody had remembered seeing her from the forensic sketch that they had done. They couldn't place her anywhere locally. They had no idea where she came from. No name, nothing. So now I'm going to read you the actual article from ABC News on this case. A Georgia man who went to prison for murder, but for more than 38 years, investigators didn't know who the victim was. Until now. Sherlene Cheryl Hammock was murdered on Halloween in 1981 in Quitman, Georgia, and buried in a shallow grave in a cornfield. Her remains went unidentified and only listed as a Jane Doe until a woman snapped a photo 
of her grave marker on the 37th anniversary of the murder and posted it on Facebook along with the report and the forensic sketch. Along with the words, known only to God, the grave marker was inscribed with a composite sketch uh, from the murder investigation. Kayla Bishop saw the Facebook post and told investigators she recognized the image as that of her childhood friend, Cheryl Hammock, who had disappeared after joining a traveling fair. The police exhumed it and it took DNA evidence from Hammock's uh, mother con to confirm the match. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation, the GBI, announced the identity this past Thursday. It was difficult growing up uh, for Hammock's uh, sister, Joni Hammock, Hey, uh, told this news station, not knowing if she was safe or if she was uh, being taken care of, a lot of worrying, a lot of looking back, a lot of senseless uh, um, worry about where she had been and what had happened to her all these years. We searched and searched and searched, but we just had no answers. The GBI investigator, uh, Miss Strandberg, told the station at, at the conviction of George Newsom for Hammock's murder made the case difficult. Newsom was also part of a traveling fair and admitted to strangling and stabbing Hammock during an argument over another man. He was shortly thereafter convicted of murder uh, in this case, but admitted only to investigators where he had buried the body. Using a using rope um, and he had strangled Hammock in a motorhome that he had stolen the GBI said. He was more forthcoming after the capture in Alabama where he wound up uh, after escaping from jail and spending two years on the lam. Sentenced uh, to life in prison, he died of natural causes behind bars in 1988. He was 58 years old. Newsom went, on, went to his grave without ever revealing Hammock's identity, but told others who were close to the case and a couple of uh, people who were interested in writing his story that he did not know the victim's full name. He only knew her as Cheryl, no last name. Either he, he didn't want to tell investigators or he kept it to himself purposely, the GBI said. After 38 years, this crime has finally been solved. Her family, and everyone, her friends, now know what really happened with Cheryl Hammock. She was deceased as of Halloween, 1981. May God rest her soul. And I know she's looking down on her family and sisters and, family and loved ones now. And it's good that we finally have a name. And she's not listed as a Jane Doe anymore and an unmarked grave. And thank you for joining me today. You stay safe out there.